Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project um, that I'm calling Tile Art. Now, for this project, participants are going to be recreating an image. Um, it's kind of a mystery image because they don't know what it's going to turn out to be until pieces start accumulating, um, and um, and that's kind of the fun of it. So. Um, the image um, that we're going to be creating is um, Mrs. Potato Head, super cute. And you can see here, this is um, our final product. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not about perfection. Um, it's kind of a, a little uh, Picasso-esque, but it's super cute and super fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do is walk you through the materials that you're going to need um, to gather and then I'm going to take you through the actual activity step by step and then I'm going to talk about a little bit of the math and the art in this project. All right so the first thing that you're going to need to do is <clears throat> make a copy of uh, Mrs. Potato Head and here she is and she's in the lesson plan. So um, I like to copy her on um, cardstock. Okay, it's a little bit thicker to work with. Um, it's nicer, um, I think that way. And when you copy her, um, copy her in the actual size. If your printer um, um, has different um, uh, settings, you want it to be an actual size. If you do print to fit, um, it'll work, but these tiles, I'm calling these tiles, these squares here are one inch by one inch. Um, and then when you do um, print to fit, it shrinks them just a little bit. Not a huge deal, but I like them to be inch by inch. Okay, so when you print that on the back, okay, it's going to be double sided. So you're going to need to print um, the letters and the numbers that go with each one of those tiles on the back, okay, of this as well. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to cut out each one of these squares individually. Um, I like to do it, you can use a paper cutter, but I like to do it by hand because it's really important for this project that it be um, perfect. Because again, they're gonna be redrawing this exactly what they have there. Um, when you cut all of those out, you're going to be sorting them into uh, different bags. One bag is gonna be labeled blanks. Okay, this is going to be all of your squares that are just yellow, okay? Another group is going to be beginning, okay, or kindergarten, first grade. Another group is intermediate or second and third grade. And advanced is fourth um, and fifth or fourth through sixth if your school goes that uh, to that grade level. Um, we do everything in our kits. We do everything um, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. So I like to keep that consistency there. That said, I do have the grade levels up there for the station facilitators who are going to be passing these out. And we'll get to that in just um, a minute. Okay, so since we're talking about beginning, min, intermediate, and advanced, you can also, when you set up your table, use um, table tents. Again, these come from our Family Math Night kits, but there are some included in the lesson plan for you as well. Um, for this particular activity, you don't need to have um, these table tents out. Um, there's not a specific beginning um, activity that they're doing, but it's there for you if you want to go ahead and arrange your tables um, that way. All right, so once you have this done and cut out, you're going, oh, and by the way, everything that I'm gonna to talk to you about today has to do with the color version of Mrs. Potato Head. That said, there is in the lesson plan a black and white version as well. I've done this before um, with different images and black and white works just fine um, if you don't have the colors or want to get the colors um, in the pencils and so forth. That is an option as well. Okay, so once Mrs. Potato Head is cut out and she's in her little pieces, you're also gonna need to cut out the five inch by five inch squares that participants are gonna be using to redraw their little tile, okay? Now I have this highlighted here for you. I don't know if you can see the bottom one. There's two on there, okay? So you're gonna need to cut these out. And again, um, I, um, I actually, uh, hand cut these out because it, it's really important that you get it right on the line there. Um, and the paper cutter can do that. You just have to be really careful with the paper cutter. Now notice these little tick marks here. 
those become really important as participants are redrawing their um, their little um, inch by inch tile. It's kind of a guide for them. Okay, so you've got a whole bunch of those. Here's here's mine right there. Okay, and those little tick marks may be hard to see, but those little tick marks are there. So you got your all your stack of those. Um, and then you're going to need to print out the um, these the numbers and the letters that go across the bottom, okay? Because this is the grid that you're going to be setting up so that as participants finish their tile, they get to place it on the grid. Um, behind here, you can see there's purple paper there. You can use whatever color you want because mostly it won't be seen, but we did have bulletin board paper and I drew in those grid lines okay, on the bulletin board paper because it's, it made it easier for participants when they came over to place their um, D3 tile to know that that's where D3 goes. That said, those little tick marks that I've been talking about, you can also line those up pretty well. You've got all these little tick marks on here and they line up both on both the top and the bottom. So that helps as a guide as well. If you um, like, you can provide a step stool uh, for some of the shorter kids. Um, they may not be able to reach, you know, B8. Um, so if you have a little step stool, they really do like putting their um, piece up on there with the help of the station facilitator. Okay, so um, you've got that done. So now you're going to need to collect your um, pencils. I used pencils. I guess you could use crayons as well. I used pencils. I think it's just easier to um, erase. When I was choosing the picture, it was really important to me that there not be too many colors because uh, I think there's six colors, six or seven colors in this, this one. Um, you're going to need to gather all of those pencils. Um, and so, um, and they're going to be need to be nice and sharp. Um, that said, they are going to get dull pretty quickly during the event. So you're going to need to also have um, some pencil sharpeners. Okay, I've got my electric pencil sharpener right here. You're going to need to um, and spread these out on the table so that participants can sharpen those when they. Um, when they pick up there, there's going to be two station facilitators here. Um, one of them is going to be managing this area and the other one is going to be managing handing out the um, tiles, I'm calling these tiles, these tiles to the participants. I had that station facilitator also in charge of the pencils so that when they handed out a tile, they also handed out the colors that were on that tile to the participant and then she made sure that she asked the participants uh, when you're done with your piece would you sharpen the pencils um, and then bring them back to me at this area over here we had an empty um, container like this so that when the participant brought their tile they both their tiles over here um, the empty tiles could then go in this little container okay um, and you're going to need some erasers. There's going to be a little bit of erasing, erasing happening. Um, and also, um, I had regular pencils um, because we're going to get to the directions in just a second, but um, sometimes it's easier to start with regular pencil. Um, okay, and then you're going to need to print out the table tents. And this is where the participants are going to um, get their directions. So they're going to follow these directions. And this is what I'm going to go over with you right now. So I have these table tents spread out. I have the um, erasers spread out on the tables. I have the pencil sharpeners spread out um, and the regular pencils spread out. But the colored pencils um, stay with one of the station facilitators along with these tiles. Um, the other station facil facilitator is going to need some tape because obviously we're going to need to tape those up. Okay, in advance, you need to have um, the, the numbers and the letters set up um, before the event starts. Okay, so this is what uh, participants are going to read. So the, step number one is get a one inch tile from the station facilitator based on your grade level. Okay. Number two, choose your colored pencils according to the colors on your tile. Again, I had the station facilitator hand those out. 
Number three, copy or enlarge the design on your tile onto the five by five inch tile using the colored pencils. I did have these also spread out on the table, so they were in easy access. Okay. It also says here, you may want to draw lightly in regular pencil first and then color it in. Your drawing does not need to be perfect. Just try your best. Okay, number four. Write the letter and the number of your one inch tile on the back of your five inch tile. So remember earlier I said that those um, tiles had a little letter and a number. So here's E9. You want them to write that, oops, on the back, okay, of their regular tile. And I learned this the hard way. <laughs> I did. Um, if you don't do that and they don't tape them up here perfectly and some start falling off. Sometimes it's hard to figure out where they go again. So um, I went back and added that into my directions. Um, you want to do that just makes it a lot easier. Okay, um, number five, with the help of the station facilitator, add your five inch by five inch tile to the collaborative grid according to the letter and number on the back of your one inch tile. Thank you for helping. And like I said, as we were putting up the little pieces here. It got really kind of fun and exciting and kids would stand and watch and see if they could figure out uh, what it was. And it actually didn't take them too long to figure out that it was um, Mrs. Potato Head. So super fun. Okay, so at the bottom of the table tents, I do have some thinking questions here. Participants want to do those, so it's an option. So here's where we're gonna get a little bit of math in. So at the beginning level, which is kindergarten first grade, it says 12 tiles in our project include the color light peach. If eight of those tiles are complete, how many more need to be finished? So it could be an addition problem, it could be a subtraction problem. You could do um, 12 minus eight equals four, or eight plus how many more <clears throat> equals 12. Okay, at the intermediate level, there are nine rows and eight columns of tiles in the tile art project. So rows go across, okay, the rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. So there are nine rows and eight columns, how many tiles in all? So they could add um, eight plus 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 eight, or nine plus 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 nine, right? Um, or they're ready for that they can do a multiplication problem eight times nine or um eight or uh, nine times eight equals 72 so there are 72 tiles in this project okay at the advanced level there are nine rows and eight columns of tiles in the tile art project okay so I'm gonna let them figure out that there's 72 all together um, one third of these tiles includes the color red how many tiles include red? Now, when I when I read this to people um, in the beginning, they look at this and go, there's no way that's a third red, okay? And you're right, that is not a third red. It's really important that they see that the question asks or says that one third of the tiles include the color red. So for this example here, this is a tile, it's not all red, but it does include the color red red. So believe it or not, <laughs> one third of these include the color red. So then they need to figure out what one third of 72 is to get that answer. Okay. And then there is a challenge question and the challenge says determine the area in square inches of the final tile art project. So that's this project here. So this one, we can figure out that it's 72 square inches, right? Um, eight times nine is 72 and each one of these are inches. But what about that project? So here, you know that this is five by five, right? So you could go five times five is 25. This has an area of 25 square inches. There are 72 of these on here. So 72 times 25 Okay, you get your answer. Or you could go, well, there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times five is 40, and nine times five is 45, so 40 times 45 is, and get your answer that way as well. Okay, just a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so a little bit of the um, math 
and the art. So sometimes when artists want to enlarge an image, um, they use a method called the grid method. So they overlay a grid on their image and then they redraw that image square by square. And that is exactly what we did here. Only we did it with a little twist because it was a mystery picture and we had a whole bunch of people involved in it. Um, in mathematics, when you, um, when you make that kind of enlar enlargement where the, uh, the shape stays the same but the size changes, that's called a dilation. And a dilation is one of the four transformations in um, geometry. Okay, so um, the, the amount that you enlarge or shrink okay, an image okay, is called the scale factor. So if I enlarged Mrs. Potato Head by a scale factor of two, Okay. then the length would be twice as long and the width would be twice as wide and the area would be four times as large as the original. If I enlarge Mrs. Potato Head by a scale factor of three, then the length is three times as long, the width is three times as wide, and the area is nine times as large. There's a pattern here. If I enlarge Mrs. Potato Head by a scale factor of four, four times as long, four times as wide. The area is 16 times as large. And what we did in our project is we enlarged Mrs. Potato Head by a scale factor of five. So the length is five times as long, the width is five times um, as long, and the area is 25 times as large. So do you see that pattern there? So let's think about um, the area. We had four, then we had nine, then we had 16, then we had 25, and those are square numbers. So if you think about it, two squared, three squared, four squared, and five squared, super cool pattern um, in mathematics. And it's really great when we have opportunities like this to make that connection um, with, uh, with students to show them um, actually the beauty of mathematics, right? So super fun project. Um, we really enjoyed it. Um, even the parents got super involved in this. So um, have fun.